to a, another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be other side of the bracket. We have Aegis versus Ninja going on to face Advil, who's out in chat. Shout out to Advil. Up left in corner, Aegis starting as the pink Terran. Bottom left in corner, we have Exodia, aka Aegis, or sorry, Ninja, starting as the black Terran. This is once again on Nemesis. A uh, little bit of background information. Advil was not feeling his best in the previous match, um, which uh, would explain some of the... Like, I, I've seen Advil play better. I, I do want to say that. I've seen Advil play much, much better. And I still think he has a good shot to make it to the round four. If he plays his best. Uh, also, shout out to Liminal Dimension. Really appreciate you for that comment out in chat. Like the feedback and the interaction. Like, honestly, if there, people aren't involved, like, just it's not as fun doing any of this. Supply Depot being constructed out in front, so it is possible we're going to see Quick Seal and Command Center grab. Overlord's scooching out top right. Aegis, I do want to say Aegis, uh, one of those guys, I've seen him out in CPL land, I've seen him playing a lot of matches these days, has been improving his skill level. I'll be interested to see what he pulls out here. Uh, I feel like Mutalisks can open, if, especially if you get air control, which is pretty easy for Zerg. It does open up. I I will say this map feels troublesome for Terran unless they're going quick drop. I really don't know another way to put it. And even then, it can be a challenge because basically Zerg can go ahead and grab this kind of protected 12 o'clock, the protected 3 o'clock. Basically, you get two semi-protected bases. You get a lot of gas that's more easy to defend than other maps stereotypically. It looked like those drones were kind of budding up and they're like, ah, oh, you go, no, you... Getting caught, like... <coughs> slacking on their job or something like that. This drone going to go bottom right for that initial scout. So I do feel like Terran have their work cut out for them on this map. Additional barracks along that edge, I believe, creates... I'm not sure if that edge is zergling tight, but I think this creates a uh, complete seal on the top. I'm going to go ahead and throw out the trust to Ninja on this one. Although, if you lift off the command center, it definitely doesn't. Needed to get lifted off to get the SUV on the other side so it can go out and scout. And it looks like he does want to go for one Rax into expand to go ahead and start. We are seeing a 12 hatchery on the opposite side, and really with the front door seal and the distance, there's just so much distance on this map. I don't know that there is a real sufficient way to punish it. In base third hatchery before gas for Aegis. And there, it does seem like all of a sudden the three hatch style has become... Uh, much more popular. I don't like it on this map in particular, or I, I don't like it because I feel like there's better options on this map in particular. I will say if this hatchery was placed like down here, it feels like there are opportunities to maybe go three hatch lurker or some adjustment on there and really throw your opponent off. One Marine going ahead and escorting that drone away has scouted the initial base. Engineering bay being constructed as well as refinery. So it looks like it's going to be that I presume plus one weapons, five racks style of play, which actually suits really, really well against the interior three hatch play. Drone making its way top right. No Zerglings have been constructed as of yet, and it is going to be, it looks like, three hatch Hydralisk. We've seen on other maps, never mind, there's two Zerglings at the front right this second. This SCV has at this stage been untouched, and it looks like he, this is clever play. <laughs> Ninja living up to his namesake is going to go ahead and take the... Well, is he going to take the back route? I think you could see the... I thought you could see the minerals from that edge and maybe go across the top, but apparently not. Regardless, he's going to be able to go towards this natural expansion and probably scout this out very, very quickly without too much trouble either direction. Zergling's doing a little bit of damage to the front upon this lack of marines. One thing is, is like an all-in Zergling lurker play could really hurt this plus one weapons build, but looks like we're seeing a factory dropped. Kind of a modification build. So stim and a factory, but no second barracks. I will say, I don't think I've... I don't know that I've seen this before. I'm curious to see how it's going to play out for Ninja. Maybe this is in reaction to that Hydral Sten Lurker wants to get some mines out to try to make up the difference. Granted, keep in mind, splash damage can clear through those lurker eggs to the north and to the east very, very rapidly. Overlord scooting in to go ahead and 
kind of sacrificing itself, honestly, to get additional scouting information. Starport. So this is a transition back to 111 with Machine Shop. Interesting. Maybe to get quick siege tech to have a more defensive slot on the front. And maybe to get a quicker science vessel. So this is kind of a, a cancellation of the lair in response to that from Aegis. And it's produced Hydralisks now. But opting maybe to just go for a Hydra bus and just going to skip the Lurker aspect of it. Is he going to drop a fourth hatchery as well? Moving out a drone. So now going up for kind of a follow-up contained situation. I don't know if he got look at... I think he might have gotten edge of that factory, but this is a very minimal marine count. Maybe he's like, okay, I was going for a bust. I got scouted. Yeah, and it looks like that edge isn't ling tight. So the SV does need to go ahead and blockade. So second bunker now on the front. The Hydralisks approaching, checking the situation out. But this is very minimal defenses from Ninja. <coughs> Stimming. Pushing some of these Hydralisks back. And I'm going to be honest, this is almost looking like a, PV, a PVZ. The way this is playing out. Now a retech to layer. I don't know if this is a mistake or not. Range being upgraded. So that drone... So Overlord's bottom right. Hydralisks just positioning out the front. We do see more troops moving out, so... And there's a good amount of workers now, so sizable economic lead. First supply depot's gone. Siege tank's in position. Siege tech being researched. Ninja in the red. He's got two supply depots and a siege tank now blockading. <coughs> and Aegis now going to go ahead and grab top right. So not fully dedicating to this sweeping attack. So Starport Science Facility and finally additional barracks. Plus one weapons just now finishing. Very interesting match at the early stages. Sending in a single Zergling to go ahead and scope the situation out. Drawing the Hydralisks. Doing a little bit of damage and pulling them off. This is a lot of economic damage here, though. In the form of nine SCVs that have not been mining this entire time. So it'll be an easy additional gas take. Evolution Chamber being dropped, Hydralisk being, uh, or sorry, Lurker Aspect being upgraded. I honestly wouldn't be shocked if Aegis kind of just transitions all the way to late game Hive Tech. Going ahead and pulling back needs to make sure these Overlords don't wander too far out of their own territory. That Siege Tank doing some damage backing up. Still no, I also want to note that's the Lone Medic out in the field thus far. So a very, very paltry attack force for Ninja. He does have double he is double engineering bay to really push the upgrades, but he's been light on the barracks to produce the troops. And while he's in this defensive position, Aegis can go ahead and grab additional bases, and I'm kind of looking for him to go ahead and grab that 12 o'clock or that 3 o'clock as well. Especially if he can just drop some lurker traps I guess that'll be a little bit less effective since the science facility is in place. Although I don't see a science vessel in production as of yet. Also, a tech switch the opposite direction to Mutalisks could really hinder Ninja right now because he's so siege tank heavy and so marine light. He's got eight marines to his name, it looks like. Nine. And granted, they have plus one weapons, but <coughs> without a science vessel and a radiate, they would be... Uh... In dire trouble, I, although it looks like Aegis doesn't have that level of information yet. Going ahead, making his way towards Hive. He's established top right. A lot of Hydralists and Lurkers morphing towards the front. Also grabbing a fifth macro hatchery out on his front. I'd like to see him actually grab an additional base on top of this. Supply counts are even, which usually puts Zerg in an advantageous situation, but it's kind of a different scenario when it's hybrid mech. Finally, additional barracks being planted but i'm wondering if ninja has just ceded too much territory in time at this stage as high tech's going to finish and he still hasn't moved out of his base and he needs to get a move on halt maybe the and it's so calm setting i'm checking out the front he sees like a lot of troops stage out there. I don't know that he has enough to to just beat that heads up. Dropping a lot of barracks in response. 
honestly more than I think he can economically sustain right this second, but maybe he goes and grabs a quick third as far as a follow-up. Age is floating a lot of minerals, preparing to go directly to Ultralisks, not even bothering with a Defiler Mound. Just wants to go straight Ultralisk. I don't... I prefer the Defiler Mound with this many Siege Tanks out, though. Because Siege Tanks do maximum damage against those Ultralisks. And honestly, <coughs> Defiler Mound, a sweep of lings, and that Adrenal upgrade is just so strong. But plus one weapons, double evolution chamber. It looks like that plus one carapace finally establishing. We don't have a lot of whole position lurkers out in the field as of yet. Not that it would make a difference with these science vessels out here. Ninja now with the supply leads starting to make initial movements. Hydral is just checking everything out. Group out towards mid-map. I don't know that this army would stand up well without some sort of support against this many... It depends on siege positioning and things. But Ninja, level 2 weapons now, level 1 armor. Really nice upgrades. We have no Defiler support. A just down a little bit supply. Has found the army there. It looks like an Overlord stranded as well. I think that's a worthy sacrifice to go ahead and see the size of that army. And get a look at the upgrades and things as well. Aegis trying to move some troops out to maybe get a pincer situation. The edge of his Hydralis Ball, though, getting hit by Irradiates and a lot else. This is still giving more time, though, for Aegis interior to base to maybe field some Ultralisks. We do see an Ultralisk or two in the numbers. So it is going to be an, <coughs> an old school, old school heads up army crash of equal supply and I don't know maybe with some really nice micro Aegis can get this done but it's going to be a challenge Ninja slowly moving forward getting closer and closer wants to establish a kill here want to see how close he looks like he didn't continue with some of the upgrades Hydralis dying here and there the Ultralis out in the field they are not speed upgraded crashing from the right the Lurker is not able to plant but the Ultralis are getting dangerously close Irradiates, and there is blood everywhere. And it looks like Aegis just had too much bulk, maybe, and is going to be able to overwhelm this. Three Sea Shanks still remaining. It's going to... It might be a total army wipe both directions. No, it looks like Aegis just doesn't have enough. Level 3 Carapace... <coughs> not being equivalent, and all of a sudden, with some nice macro, Ninja has some follow-up siege tanks and follow-up marines to continue the pressure at the natural expansion. Some more Ultralisks and Hydralisks on point. They're heavily out-upgraded, and they're just going to have to dead... Yeah, attack heads up. Ultralisks melting rapidly. Yeah, I think with just a different unit composition, this would have been an Aegis win, but right now, it looks like Ninja is going to be able to go ahead and walk in and devastate this natural expansion. Maybe a little bit more macro would have uh, accomplished it as well. Some lurkers burrowing from the rear. But very quickly getting taken care of. So nice turnaround there from Ninja. Very odd build, but it's working out for him. Natural expansion going to get completely crushed. Uh, Aegis not GGing yet. Maybe he's hoping the round of troops that he's going to be able to produce at his main in the form of Ultralis will be sufficient, but no, gonna GG right there. It's just a delay GG. Well played by Ninja all the way around. Good one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Give a like and subscribe. Thank you for listening.